Such as should be saved, and let us remember the church as a whole and the, the community and the world that the Lord will continue to manifest His glory and His power. Amen. Amen. Save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Amen. And that's our whole goal and purpose to want to see souls saved, set free, and delivered. Amen. 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 That was Jesus' uh, assignment. Yeah. He came and preached, you know, he preached to the poor. Deliverance to the captain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Help people recover their sight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Set at liberty. You know, them that are bruised, those that have gone through things. He mm -hmm. sets people at liberty. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, Come unto me, all ye that labor yeah. and are heavy laden. Yeah. He said, I'll give you rest. Yeah. 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 Take my yoke. Uh, take yeah. my yoke. I call that an exchange. He says, Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Yeah. Yeah. So my yoke is easy. My burden is like, he makes life better. Yeah. 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 He's, he's better than coffee maker. Yeah. <laughs> he makes life better. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, amen. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, does anyone else have any particular prayer, prayer requests? I have an unspoken request. Uh, one unspoken request. Yeah. Um, first lady. Praise the Lord. Christian ministry. Um, let's pray one, continue to pray one for another. Uh, let's keep the bishop lifted up in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, that's the church to stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. And let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, just to say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for being a good God, for watching over us, protecting us from danger, seen and unseen, for keeping us from darkness and bringing us into your light. We pray, Lord, that your love will continue to rest upon us, your mercy, your grace, and your kindness. We ask you, Lord, that you hear our humble cry. Yes, Bless each and every request that's been made known and every unspoken request yeah. in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word that the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous yeah. availeth much. And we believe your word. We yeah. trust in your word. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to manifest your glory. Save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you and praise you. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. We want to uh, go over to uh, the second chapter of the book of James. Amen. The second chapter of the book of James. Amen. We were uh, pronouncing this. 
this in Hebrew, we would call him Yaakov in the name, which, which actually means Jacob. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we want to go over to the book of James, uh, chapter number two. Especially in the New Testament church, uh, referred to as Jesus' brother. And um, he was uh, a master and a great teacher, you know. And that's why uh, when you look at this book, the book of James, uh, chapter 1 and through chapter 5, it literally outlines uh, the Torah, you know. It, it, he references the Torah a lot. Um, and we know that's the first five books of the Bible. And um, he references it a lot uh, in the scriptures. And so that's showing you that he was a teacher, a teacher. Uh, 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 I don't want to call him a rabbi, but he was actually a teacher of, of the word of God. And that's why you, when you read his book, you get a lot of things that are straightforward. You know, he's straightforward. In his teaching, no, no fluff, you know, no airs, you know. Paul, he can get, he can get a little uh, uh, wordy, you know. But James is focused on the business, you know. What, what, what? Let's see what the rubber that meets the road, you know. What do you have to do, you know? I'm kind of like that in my own mind, you know. Uh, just tell me what you want me to do, and we'll see if I can do it, you know. Just let me know, you know. Give me the information. And that's what James does. James, he gives us the information. And uh, tonight, you know, we want to focus and start uh, when we begin to read. Uh, we actually want to uh, look at, uh, start reading from verse 14. Amen. And, and I want to read right now, but I want to just... Uh, give a, a good introduction to what we want to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. And what we want to talk about tonight, I want you to have uh, a mindset, you know, before we start reading these scriptures. Um, we want to talk about tonight living a Christ-centered life versus living a Christless life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Living a Christ-centered life Versus living a Christ-less life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's important for us. It's important for us to live a Christ-centered life. As opposed to living a Christ-less life. You may say, well, Pastor Queen, what is a, a Christ-less life? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to get that answer... Let's, let's just go over here to the Psalms, Psalms number one. Hold on to James because we're going back to there. But would you turn with me over to Psalms um, number one? And, and um, if we were to think about uh, three types, if you allow me to say this, three types of of people in the spiritual world. Three types of people in the spiritual world. And you got you got sinners, uh, and you got the saints, and you've got the ungodly. Uh, you got the sinners, you got the saints, and then you got the ungodly. Uh, amen. Sinners, saints, and ungodly. And, and, and this first book of Psalms, it really tells you what they are, what they are. Sinners, saints, and the ungodly. All right, let's read that. Go ahead, Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, uh -huh. nor sitteth in the seat of the scorners. Yes. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Mm -hmm. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
Read. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right. Amen. Now, in this particular chapter, or this particular psalm, you know, he's describing the saints. He's describing the saints. The saints are like a tree that is planted by the river of water. Right? right? Uh, his leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth, it shall what? Prosper. Prosper. All right? But then he says, the ungodly are not so. All right? Now, the ungodly person is a person who professes God, but doesn't, but lives as though God does not exist. Uh, they profess God, but live as though God does not exist. That's living a Christless life. Uh, they profess God, have a belief in God, uh, not the correct type of belief, but they have a belief in God, that God exists, but, and profess that they are Christians, but don't live as though God exists. In other words, they say they are Christ-like, but do what they want to do. Uh, and you have people like that. Uh, profess to be uh, uh, godly, but uh, by their actions and by their deeds, are not. All right? And then you have righteous people. Uh, we already talked about righteous people. Then we have sinners. And you know what a sinner does. A sinner is an, un an unregenerated person. Uh, they, they, we all born sinners, mm -hmm. Amen. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, profess to be a Christian, <laughs> but we live according to the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Sin, yeah, right. straight up sin, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, uh, the reason why we're going to this particular scripture here is that notice how he's 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 referring to the ungodly in in verse number one. He refers to the ungodly uh, uh, again in verse number five, you know, and he, he talks about that. It's repeated. So he's doing that for emphasis. You know, don't be an ungodly person. If you're professing Christ, don't be an ungodly person. Amen? And if you want to live your life, what? According to the scriptures. According to the word of God. That's why he says, uh, 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 a righteous person, his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord and what? In his law doth he do what? Meditate. Meditate day and night. Notice, notice a righteous person. If you do that, he said, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and bring forth what? Fruit. Fruit. There's going to be some productivity. Uh, there's going to be some evidence that you are a Christian. Right. Amen. There's going to be some righteous evidence that you walk with Christ. Amen. Amen? That you live by faith. Amen. Uh, uh, there's going to be some evidence of that. Amen. Now note and he said, those that do that, they shall bring forth their fruit in the season. His leaf shall not wither, meaning your fruit shall not dry up. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. Why can God, God makes that type of statement because of individual who walks according to the word of God shall be successful. Mm -hmm. Amen. An individual that walks according to the word of God shall be successful. God is going to ensure your success. Amen. Is he able to do it? Oh, yeah. uh, he's able to ensure your success. Despite all the odds, despite the chest and trials, that's why in the book of Romans, he can emphatically say, all things work together for good. Uh, to them that what? Love God. And to them who are being called according to his what? Purpose. Now notice. 
He says, and whatsoever we need shall prosper. Then he says in verse 4, the ungodly are what? Not so. Those who confess Christ and don't live according to the word, their life is not going to be so. Amen? Uh, the way of a transgressor is what? Hard. Amen? Uh, so he sets before us good and evil. Choose you this day whom you going to serve. Uh, then you have to make up in your mind as for me and my house, we're going to do what? Serve the Lord. Now notice, he said the ungodly are not so, but are like the jab, which is wind drives away. Now notice, he says it again. That's the third time he repeats the ungodly. Verse number five. And remember what we taught about the scripture. In a, in a chapter or in a verse, when there's a repeat of a statement or a word that's there for emphasis. Yeah. Right. Amen? So he's trying to emphasize, don't be an ungodly person. Uh, he says, if the ungodly are not so, uh, uh, the ungodly shall not stand, notice, stand where? In the judgment. Uh, when the judgment comes, when, when Christ returns, uh, and he's going to separate, the scriptures declare, the sheep and the goat. Uh, you don't want him to look at you because you're ungodly and say, depart from me, uh, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But you want him to say to you, because you're righteous, huh? Uh, what? Well done. well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Uh, enter ye into the what? The joy of the Lord. So notice what he says. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sin. See, that's telling you it's different. In the congregation of the righteous. Huh? So he says, for the Lord. Now notice what he says. The Lord knoweth the way of who? The righteous. The righteous. He knows how you should live. Right. God has declared in the scripture how you should live. Am I right? Yes. Huh? Uh, then he says, but the, uh, the way of the... Now he's saying it again in verse number six. Uh, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. The hope of a hypocrite <laughs> shall what? Perish. An ungodly person is a hypocrite. Right. Uh, he's a pretender. Right. Uh, and, and we are not to be pretenders. Amen. Not real or nothing, baby. Real or not. Amen. 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 Uh, just be real uh, uh, or not. Uh, don't be a hypocrite. Uh, don't be a pretender. Uh, don't fake it. Amen. Uh, because all things are open and naked before God. Uh, God knows your thoughts are far off. Uh, you can't hide from God. Uh, uh, so just be honest. Just be open. Uh, don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a pretender. Amen. Don't be an actor. Uh, uh, don't do one thing and uh, don't say one thing and do another. Uh, be real. Amen. Be real. Amen? Amen. All right, good. So we got our we can squeeze that to death. I like it. Let's 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 go over to the book of James. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Now, now, when we're looking at this at James, you know, like I said, there's a saint, there's a sinner, and then there's ungodly people. And, and that and that verse it, 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 uh, in, in the book of Rome, uh, Psalm. It's warning us against ungodliness. Yes. Amen. Uh, we gotta, we gotta, we can't be a part of ungodliness. Amen. Uh, we've got to live this thing. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just the way it's laid out. And and my other thought before we get into it, um, uh, transformation. And and what I'm looking at, what I'm saying about that word, transformation. We should want, we should want visitors to come into the congregation. Then we should want the visitors to be members. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. And then we would want them to become active members. 
Yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Then we would want them to come through their activity disciples. Amen. Disciples of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Transformation. Right. Amen. Uh, becoming a, a visitor, coming into the house of God, then uh, uh, seeing something that attracts them to cause them to want to become a member, and then seeing something that is more attractive that makes them want to get involved. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and through the involvement, they become disciples. Amen? Amen? That's how God has styled his church. Mm -hmm. uh, disciples are involved. Yes. Yes. Uh, they're, not, they're not just in the church, being, being sitting in the church, yes. at that they're involved. Amen. Yeah. They, they are disciples. That's right. Amen? Yes. That should be the goal of every one of us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? To be a yes. disciple, a follower of Christ. Yes. And, and what proves one is a disciple is the fact that they are doing what Christ has taught. Amen? Amen? That's a priority in the hearts of a person that is, that is striving to be like Christ. Paul said this. He said, I travail in birth to will. Christ be what? Formed in you. Christ has to be formed in you. Uh, and, and how is he formed in you? Through your daily actions. Through your daily deeds. Amen. Living, walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, now I got it. All right. Now. Now, now, let me ask you this question. Got some serious questions here. All right. Uh, in this book here, uh, uh, James, in this particular section that we're going to, James is addressing a problem. Remember, I told you James is straightforward. Yeah. Amen. So he's addressing a problem in the church, and that problem is not only in this church, but it's in churches. All around. Yes. Amen. Everywhere. Every church has yes. this particular problem. Yes. Amen. And the problem that, that he's addressing is that people were professing their faith without works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. uh, they were professing that I'm, I'm Christ like, but, but they didn't have any proof of it, no evidence of it. Uh, uh, they were professing their faith in Christ without works. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> they were ungodly. Uh, hypocrites. Pretenders. Amen. Uh, uh, that's, that's in every church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? That's everywhere. Yeah. Every church. Every church has some pretenders. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, every church has some hypocrites. I'm talking about physical. physical. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Right. Right. Uh, you got to make that plain. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody in the body of Christ are doers. Right. Right. Amen. Right. They're living something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Now, so James, he's addressing a problem, right? Yeah. And people were professing Christ, but not living according to Christ. So here's my, here's my first question. Can... A man have faith and and not do good works. Can a man say I got faith and not do good works? Yes. No. No. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Why do you say yes? Because I've seen people do it. I've seen people who had faith in God, but they were just lazy. <laughs> All right. And so I mean that's why I said yes. All right. So we're going we to, tonight, we're going to prove you wrong. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and let me say this. Um, in our scriptures here, jumping ahead, when the Bible 
describes faith. When the Bible talks about faith, when it talks about a believer, right? A believer is someone who is a hearer and a doer. Uh, the world has a different de definition of a believer. But a scriptural uh, believer is one who hears the word of God and they do it. Yeah. Right. They live by it. Yes. That's a belief. Amen. 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 Now, in our, in our scripture here, it talks about the devil. Mm. Uh, he says, the de uh, he says, you believe God? And, and James says, that's good. He says, even the devil believes and trembles. <laughs> but now, now, the devil believes, but does the devil live holy? No. Uh, so is the devil Christ-like? No. 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 What's the difference? What's the difference? He doesn't do it. He doesn't, he's not a hearer and a doer. Right. He's not obeying. Right. Amen? Right. So how do we apply that to us? Yep. Got to be a hearer and a doer. Amen. Amen. Can't be like the devil. <laughs> Don't be like the devil. He's a deceiver. Amen. Amen. He does wicked things, but yet he believes God. He believes that there is a God. Huh? But what's the difference? He's not doing. He's not keeping the word. So I can believe God is, but if I'm not doing what God says, I'm like the devil. I don't want to be in his company. I want to be a hearer and a doer. My brother? The devil knows the word of God. Yes! Uh, and he'll give you just enough of his, of his truth uh -huh. to deceive you. Yes. Huh? But yes. he's not going to do any of it. He's not going to do it up. No, because he can't do it. Wow, that's an ungodly. That's an ungodly. Yep, my God. So believe in so, God, not doing it, ain't doing you no good. Right. And he said a very good statement. He said the devil knows the word of God, mm -hmm. huh? but doesn't do it. You can know the word, but not do it. Amen? Amen. You got to know it and do it yeah. by faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. By faith. You. Now, now, the other question I have, can faith without what works? Uh, good works save a man? No. Can faith, listen, let me read that again. Excuse myself. Can faith without good works, yep, I said it right. Can faith without good works save a man? No. 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 Oh, you need to have some good works. Amen? Bishop. Huh? Because he said when he returns, he's going to reward every man according as the work shall be. Shall be. That's the reward. My brother? Uh, you were created uh, unto good works. Ah, to do good works. Yeah, so if we don't do what, that's what, we, what we were created for. Yes. Now, now, that's beautiful. And, and when we look at the scriptures, how God intended it to be, that people live right because they're connected to God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Follow me? What, what, and good works follow. So, my good works, if you allow me to say it this way, is because of my relationship with God. Right. I don't do good works to enter into the kingdom. Huh? I don't do good works to be saved. I do good works because I am saved. Amen. Amen. Huh? That's huge. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Huh? I, I, if, if my title is firefighter, I go fight fires because I am a firefighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, I, I do operations because I am a doctor. Uh, if I say I'm a doctor and don't do operations, am I really a doctor? <laughs> if I don't put out any fires and I say I'm a firefighter, am I really a firefighter? If I say I'm a Christian <laughs> and don't do good works, am I from a pretender? Am I really a Christian? Uh, I'm, I'm ungodly. So we just have it. We just have. We just have the title. Right. I'm a firefighter. Right. I'm a Christian. Right. If you're not doing, you know, what it entails. Right. What the title entails. Yeah. Right. And then am I that? Just because I call myself that, that don't make me that. Make me that. What makes me that? Works. Doing it. Works. Amen. Living it. Amen? Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Hey! I the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, let me hit first lady, then I'll come to you. Only because you had your hand up first, but she's my wife. Oh, wait, say that again, I'm sorry. Listen on a day to day basis. Yeah. Not, not, not just in front of people. Right. Ooh. You are all alone. Yes. Yeah. What she just described is character. Right. And she gave the definition of character. Uh -huh. You know, what you do in private, that's who you really are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Go ahead. And furthermore, show me your works, and I'll tell you who you are. Right. Your that identifies you. Your works will tell you tell who you are. Yep, that and identifies you. Can't, you can't fake it. Nope, can't fake it. They know how your works. That's why I say you can only do so much. You don't see me. Yep. And I'm going to piggyback on what he says, and what you produce. Huh? Your fruit. Check your fruit. <laughs> yeah. Know what you're producing. My sister. That's what I was just hearing say. You shall know a man by his fruit. Fruit. Check your fruit. What, what, what? Uh, look back over the last 24 hours. Um. And, and think about what you've been doing. Uh, how much of that time you've been doing the right thing? Uh, how much of that time you've been doing something opposite? Mm -hmm. Check it. Mm. Check it through. We do that at the supermarket. <laughs> Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. <laughs> so you know how important it is. Uh, and then when you bite into it, you want something sweet. sweet. Sometimes it ain't sweet. You be like, oh, man. Right. Right. Uh, same way with God. God, God when, he, when he uses you, he wants something sweet. Uh, he don't, how, how the Holy Ghost say it? The Holy Ghost don't want to be grieved. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. All right. And then... The, the last question I have is, how essential is faith to your walk with God? Without it, it's without it, it's impossible to please. Yep, it's everything. What did you say? Without faith, it's impossible to please. It's impossible to please. It's in everything. I was just thinking about the centurion. Uh huh. When he was telling Jesus to uh, uh, heal his daughter. Yes. And he said, I have faith, but help thou my unbelief. Help my, my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Amen. My Lord, we need help. Yeah. We need help. And in the book of Habakkuk, it says, The just shall what? Live by faith. It says something. It says, it says something a little bit different because because every time I quote that, I quote it like that too. But there's another word there that's huge. Let's go over there. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter, chapter number. Where is that? 
chapter number two and and the B clause of verse four. Mm -hmm. That little word changes everything. <laughs> Y'all gotta forgive me. I'm excited. I'm excited. This word is exciting. What, what chapter? Oh, chapter two. Chap Habakkuk chapter two. Oh, it's a whole chapter. That word changes everything. Yes. The just shall live by his faith. His faith. Amen? By your faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's how you should live. Huh? Mm -hmm. Just shall live by his faith. His faith in who? God. God. Through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but Christ living in me. Mm -hmm. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the, of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? I live by the same. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You put that two words, two ways. Your faith in Christ or faith in Christ? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I live by it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Then he said, man shall not live by what? But by what? Every word that does what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God. Faith cometh by hearing and that by what? Word. Amen. If you want to increase your faith, you've got to increase the knowledge of the word. Uh, and then when you do that, based on this Bible class, you're going to increase your productivity. You hear me? You're going to increase. Why did I say you're going to increase your productivity? Because you're going to be a doer. Because you're going to be a doer. Amen? Because you're operating by your faith. It's good stuff. My brother? The Bible says that Jesus is the author and finisher. Yes. Uh huh. So that lets you know it's his faith. It's his faith. He's the author. He's the author. Amen? Now, I just want to go to one more scripture before we get into James. Uh, into James. Amen? About the importance of faith. Mm -hmm. When uh, uh, Jesus, at one time, he, he, he saw the faith of those brethren that took the paraplegic uh, mm -hmm. to Christ when they tore off the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And Jesus, the Bible says, he saw their faith. Yeah. Amen? It was an action. He saw it. Amen. The Lord wants to see you in action. Yeah. That's how you just demonstrate your faith. Yeah. Yes. That's true. And not only your faith, <laughs> Bishop, that demonstrates the friendship yes. that they had with that pair of pleasures. Yes. Absolutely. They loved them. They loved them. They was there yes. with them. It was there. It was. Ooh, see now, see now, you hitting on what James said when we're going to read a little bit more here about if you, uh, uh, if you see your brother in need, uh, destitute, uh, and you say, be ye warm and feel, uh, not giving them what they need, uh, uh, well, how, how is that faith? Well the, love. the love of God in you. Uh, compassion. Uh, motivate you. Uh, you got to have compassion on people. And if you look that word up, compassion, we all must have it. 
Huh? The word compassion is you see a need and have a desire to help it, no matter what, uh, at any cost. Uh, that's what God does for you. He looks beyond your faults and he saw your need. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And while we were yet sinners, uh, dead in our trespasses and sin, it was Christ uh, that died by the young God. Uh, hallelujah. He saw our need. He had compassion upon us. Amen. This is an all-inclusive salvation. All-inclusive. Amen. Now, let's, let me, I got just this one scripture. I got a lot of them. I want to go here because time is going to run out on me. Uh, God, God, my God, we need three hour Bible classes. Uh, uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 10. When Jesus heard it, when Matthew 8, read verse number 9. For I am a man under authority, uh -huh. having soldiers under me. Yep, now this is that centurion that was uh, with Christ. My question was, how important is your faith? Right. All right, and he had a daughter. Mm -hmm. I believe the centurion name is Jairus. Mm -hmm. He had a daughter that was sick. Uh, and, he, and he said to Jesus, hey, just speak the word. You ain't got to come to my house. Uh, just speak the word and my daughter shall be healed. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> All right, read. For I am a man under authority. Yes. Having soldiers under me. Uh -huh. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. Yes. And to another come, and he cometh. Uh -huh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Yes. When Jesus heard it, he marveled uh -huh. and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now notice, Jesus marveled uh, at that man's faith. Uh, we want Jesus to marvel at our faith. Amen? Amen. Uh, now notice the definition of of how that man gave faith. Read that again and notice his definition. For I am a man under authority. I'm a man that has authority. Having soldiers under me. I got soldiers or disciples under me. And I say to this man. I say to this man. Go and he goes. Go. He gives you the word and he goes and he what? Go it. Go it. Meaning that he do with it. Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? He heard the word and he did it. Yes. Huh? Christ wants you to hear the word and yes. do it. Yes. You are under his authority. Yes. Huh? Are you not under his authority? Yes. Do you not call him Lord? Yes. <laughs> did you call him Lord today? Yes. <laughs> that means you are under, submitted to his authority. Yes. And notice what causes him to marvel that you hear his word and you do it. Yes. Never had seen them. Never had seen them. Never seen them. Yep. Read. Read. And to another come. Come. And he cometh. And he cometh. And to my servant do this. And to my servant do this. And he doeth it. And he doeth it. Heard the word and did it. And what was Jesus' response to individuals like that? Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. I have not found so great faith. Nah, nah, nah. No, not in Israel. Nah, did you read that word, marvel? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, you just asked what Jesus said. Yeah, what did he say? When oh. Jesus heard it, uh -huh. he marveled. There it is. That's where I'm going. I get to. He marveled. Mm -hmm. What's that word, marvel? Amazed. Like, wow. In awe. In awe. Awestruck. And you know what really awestruck him about his faith? 
that he was a Gentile. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. He was a Gentile. Yeah. He, he said, Jesus said, my own people don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, don't let the sinner outshine you. Don't let the young doctor outshine you. Come on. Don't let him outshine you. Uh, don't let the young godly be a better friend than you. Huh? Uh, uh, he said, "All." Oh, Come on! Yeah, all Israel. He didn't find no great faith. Huh? All the church. He all didn't the, find no great faith. Can't, can't find no great faith. All yeah. Israel. Uh, they were taught the law. They knew yes. the law. But Jesus said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." They ain't found no great faith like that. Wow. Uh, uh, he got the shot. I feel the Holy Ghost. Bishop, he was a Gentile and he was unsaved. Unsaved. But they can almost look better than a saint. Yep, they could. They can. Huh? Yep. They, they almost look better than a saint. Oh, yep. Let us not, let us not do that. <laughs> Amen? Let's look not to do that. Me and the elder, we, some of y'all too was at a, a preaching moment uh, somewhere. I ain't going to say nothing so y'all probably know. And I told the other, I hit him because the preacher was doing a bad job. Uh, I said, that's, that, that's an example of what not to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, you know, you also want to look for good examples, and you want to see bad examples, and say, oh, that ain't what I'm going to do. I ain't going to follow that. I'm going to follow that good example. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> My brother, go ahead. Mmm, I like that. Yeah. Did you hear what he said? He wasn't caught up by his own authority, his own power. He wasn't smelling himself. Pride. Huh? Thank you, Lord. He, was, he humbled himself. He was above him. Yes. Yeah. This is good. All right. Let's, let's, let's go back over to James. Thank you. We got it, don't we? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, we got this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. Glory be to God. Amen. That's what Kenny Copeland said. Glory be to God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Verse 14. Yes, thank you, Jesus. James chapter number 2 and verse 14. That was a wonderful introduction, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right. What does, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? All right, now notice. He said, what does it profit? Amen. And that word profit uh, is what good is it? What value is it? Uh, what value is it if a man, if a brethren... Yep, if my brother said, my prophet and brethren, though a man say he have faith, uh, and have not what? Works. Anything to back it up. Uh, what value is that? Uh, that's like that ungodly person. Uh, they say they're Christians all day. Oh my God. Uh, but don't have any works to back it up. Uh, remember, you do good works because of your relationship. Because of who you are. Yes. Uh, because you are Christian. Yes. Because you are saint. Because you are righteous. Uh, that's why you do good works. You don't do good works to make it into heaven. That's not the goal. Uh, you do good works because he is your Lord. Uh, because you are a Christian. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, your works won't save you. Uh, but your relationship with him will save you. And to be made in good relationship with him, you got to be a hearer and a doer. <laughs> this man shall be blessed in all his deeds. Didn't Jay say that? Yeah. Um, somebody had a hand up. My brother? Yeah. On what came to me, I would also say, Bishop, 
um, we do good works because it's his will for our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same. That's exactly what I'm saying. Huh? It's God's will. It's God's desire. He said, I've shown me, O man, uh, what does the Lord require of me? To love justice, to show mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Huh? Good works. Amen. My brother. Absolutely. Yeah, faith. Yes. Scripture tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped. Yes. It's evidence of things not seen. Yeah. You might have faith, but until you get the evidence to show yes. that faith, yes. I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. I can say, tell you all day long, I believe this, I do. Until you show me your ev the evidence yes. of what you're talking about. Yes. Um, I'm glad he brought that word up, action. Mm -hmm. That's what that word works uh, is an interpreted to. Yes. It means action. Amen. You have to, uh, with your faith, show forth some action. Right. Uh, if you don't, your faith is dead. Yes. Dead faith. Yes, sir. Huh? Mm -hmm. Dead faith. Yes, sir. I don't want to walk around with anything dead. Huh? Alive. I want my faith to be alive. I want my hope to be alive. <laughs> Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. I want nothing dead in my mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Alive. That's the uh, come with some action. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, I wanted that. I wanted the Lord wanted me to say that, and I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. But the Lord had mercy on me, touched his mind to say that word. <laughs> Ain't God doing it? Yes, <laughs> All right. Now, where we at? What verse we in? Read that uh, 14. What does it profit, my brother? All right. What does it benefit you, my brethren? Though a man say he has faith. And now I'm confessing my faith. And have not works. And that word works means what? Action. Action. Read. Can faith save him? Can faith save him? All right, read. If a brother or sister be naked uh -huh. and destitute of daily food. Now, what caught me on this verse was he talked about a brother or a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody in the household of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who you love. Amen? Amen. Uh, he going deep here. Oh, yeah. You got to, if somebody who you care about. Mm -hmm. uh, notice what he said, read. If a brother or sister be naked uh -huh. and destitute of daily food. Now, they naked, that doesn't mean that, how uh, can I gotta say, they have no clothes. Uh, they're not faking it, they have none. Right. Wow. That's why they're naked. Yes. Uh, so he's putting it out there as though, you know, there's, there's, there's no uh, surmising that they're faking it. Right. He's right. saying they're naked. They have no clothes. Read. And destitute of daily food. Now, they said, he said, with emphasis, they have no food. Yes. They hungry. Yes. Yes. Huh? They stomach touching their back. Nothing. look bad. They uh, they in bad shape. Am I right? Yes, sir. All right, now read. And one of you say unto them, One of you say, Depart in peace. Go in peace. Be ye warm and feed. Be, be warm. May God bless you with some clothes. And may God feel your tummy. Uh, but I'm not going to do it. Now I'm praying, I'm praying faith. Be warm, be filled, wow. go in peace. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Like that. Run up on the side, right around the corner.
that there is one God. Thou doest well. Uh, you do well. The devils also believe. Now, there you, that's what we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. The devils also believe. And tremble. Uh, and tremble. Meaning they believe it. And uh, true biblical faith is being a hearer and a doer. True biblical faith is not just believing. Amen? I just can't say I believe this and I have no actions behind it. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. That's biblical faith. Correct faith. Amen? Biblical belief. Amen? There's a difference. People that don't have biblical belief are, are ungodly. Amen? I mean, we talked about ungodly people. All right, read. Verse 20. Uh -huh. But wilt thou know, O vain man, uh -huh. that faith without works is dead? Now he keeps hitting on it. Faith without works is what? Dead. dead. Faith without action is dead. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right, now, here we go. This, this is good. This is where we want to be. Uh, verse 21. Now he's going to get ready to talk about Abraham. Amen? And then he's going to talk about Rahab, the harlot. Mm -hmm. I mean, how come we just don't say Rahab? We got the harlot behind you. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> 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 we, we something else. God can say it. I know what she did. About <laughs> that person being a Gentile. Yes. You know, she acted out of faith, but yes. she, she's a harlot. She, yes. She's not even a... You got it. You got it. You got it. Did y'all hear what he said? He talked about, uh, well, let me put it this way. When, he's, when God mentions Abraham here, he's mentioning a, a, a righteous person. Uh, somebody that is of good standing. Uh, then he mentions Rahab the harlot, who was a straight up sinner, straight up wicked. Huh? And uh, when I was reading uh, about her life, uh, God, you know, I don't, I don't know this for certain. This ain't, this ain't me, so, you know, I read this. <laughs> I'll put that out. They said that she was a harlot uh, at the age of 10. Uh, and uh, she didn't get saved and delivered until the age of 40. Uh, so she was in that condition for over 30 years. Uh, but the way the Bible describes her as a magnificent woman, yeah. what makes her a magnificent woman? Her faith. Yes. Her action. Uh, her belief in God. Yes. That's what elevates you. Yes. That's what causes God to marvel at you. Huh? Yeah. Not, not your past life, yeah. but your faith in Him. Yeah. Being a hearer and a doer. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about her in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because of her faith. Yeah. Huh? Wow. The whole house. My sister? That's, that's what it was. Oh. oh, you gonna say that? Confirmation. Hey, that, we, see, we gonna go, let's go there. Yes. <laughs> we done passed by Abraham. That was us. That was us. I like a big drum. I like a big rescue store. Huh? I like a good deliverance. I like a good ending. Huh? And not only that, she was also in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Now, now, let's look at her faith. Let's go over there. That's uh, in the book of uh, in the book of Judges. Joshua, I'm sorry. Joshua chapter number two. Huh? Verse number nine through eleven. Pastor Stewart, this, this Bible class helping me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And she said unto the men, 
Now she said, this is Rahab the harlot. Uh-huh. Read, read, this read, bad. read uh, eight. And before they were laid down, uh-huh. she came up unto them upon the roof. Uh-huh. And she said unto the men. Now let's set, let's set, the, let's set the tone. Yeah. There was uh, 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 three spies yes. that, three that spies. were going to spy out the land. Yes. Amen. In Jericho. Yeah. Uh, and and then um, uh, uh, the men that were in that area, they heard about it. Right. They came looking for them. Uh, <laughs> but Rahab hid them. Uh-huh. Uh, all right, read. And before they were laid down, she came upon the roof, uh-huh. unto them upon the roof. Yes. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Now notice, this Woo! is faith. Yes. Uh, yes. He said, I know God gave it to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lord. I know God is yes. you. She's confessing her faith. Yes. Uh, we ought to confess our faith Come in on, God. Yeah. Uh, read. And I, and I and that your terror is fallen upon us. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Uh-huh. All right, read. Well, we have heard. No, 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 they had the nerve to come back with an evil report. <laughs> hearing, hearing all of that. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, read. For well, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. My faith cometh by hearing. That's why you got to read your word. Study to show yourself approved. Huh? If you want to increase your faith, read the word. Huh? We heard, read. We heard, or we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. Mm. And what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan. Uh huh. What verse is it? 10. All right. Sihon and all, whom ye utterly destroyed. Yeah. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Uh huh. Wow. Neither did there remain any more courage in mm. any man. <laughs> Because of you. <laughs> For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above. Hallelujah. And the earth beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's she talking, ain't she? <laughs> uh, uh, no, she preaching. She preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Say, double body man is unstable. She's not unstable. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's talking about it. Uh, she heard about it. It's not talking about it. Yeah. Uh, she believed God. Yeah. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And she did something about it. Yeah. She believed it. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that, no. yeah. that, that just stir you up, though. <laughs> and, and notice, what made, what made her so uh, uh, marvelous was her faith. Yes. Huh? These words. Mm-hmm. Huh? Before God. Yeah. Huh? You Thank you, Lord. Out. That would made her stand out yes. in the sight of God. Uh, that's why God used her. Because of her faith. Yes. Her belief. Uh, that's why uh, if you love me to say, God marveled. <laughs> I'm just, that's me saying that. <laughs> uh, read. What verse is she? 12. Oh, we good. I saw that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And then she, they told her to tie a, a red ribbon. Huh? Uh, and out the window, yeah. when we come by, we're going to remember you. Uh, not only are we going to remember you, yeah. we're going to remember your family. We're going to remember your whole household. Yeah. <laughs> all in the uh, because all of your faith. Yeah. Uh, you can, that's, see, now, now that's another point that God wanted me to write down and I didn't. Your faith changes the atmosphere. Come on now. Uh, yeah. Your faith changes the directory of yeah. your life. She was a harlot, but her faith made her a queen. Her faith put her in the hall of fame. Her faith caused us to be talking about her tonight. She's not forgotten. Your faith in God's word will change your life. Yes, it will. How many of y'all been Woo! changed? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. When I see the blood, I'll pass over.
change. Wow. Not just hearing it, doing it causes the change. Yes, it does. Causes the breakthrough. Causes the deliverance. Causes the change. Your faith in God changes the whole outcome of whatever you're doing. <laughs> whatever you're going through. Yes! Your faith changes the whole outcome. Yes! Do we believe that tonight? Amen. I want to put that deep in you tonight. I wish I, I wish I had something to open you up and put it in you. Because <laughs> huh? that's it. Now your faith in God changes. Sure the whole direction, yes. the whole outcome, your obedience to the word of God makes a difference. Yes, it does. <laughs> Do we believe that tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. I've been changed. <laughs> hey, my sister. That's it. Yes, she did it. She did it. So changed. Yep. Cause what? Deliverance. When you're a hearer and a doer, it'll cause deliverance. Now, conversely, why aren't folk delivered? Because they're not hearing and doing. Don't believe. Don't believe. Ungodly. Man, this is just Bible study. I'm going to re-listen to that. Y'all really listen to that. You mentioned limbs. That was when you know, oh, the angel well, of death passed over. But you know what I found remarkable is that was the old ceremonial law that they were practicing by that because that was a okay. emblem of things to come. Absolutely. Think about how many centuries that was before Christ even walked the earth. Come on here, somebody. You talk <laughs> That's about why we, that blows my mind. It just resonated with me when you yeah. said it just mm-hmm. now. A type in the shadow. But now, but now, just so we can get the story straight, that didn't happen then. Right. Uh, what he's describing is the Passover. Right. That's when they put the blood over the door. Right. She, she put a red scarf, right. uh, uh, scarf uh, on the door, right. uh, representing that blood. Yes. <laughs> her faith delivered her. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Action. Changed. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right, where we at now? Let's go back over there. Uh, so we see James here now is putting a contrast, right? He's talking about Abraham and he's talking about Rahab the harlot. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, so he said Abraham was a prominent man, uh, or, 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 or prominent. Put it that way. Rahab came from the gutter. Huh? What made them common was their faith. What made them equal in God's sight was their faith. Huh? God has no respecter of person. God honors faith. Amen. He that cometh to God. Must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, what does James say? He says, Your background doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> what means everything is your faith and your obedience. That's everything. Your faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Man, woman, doesn't matter. Rich, poor, doesn't matter. Huh? Your background, your heritage, doesn't matter. Yes. Huh? Everybody gets a shot. Jew, Gentile. <laughs> Jew, Gentile, the Protestant, the Catholic. <laughs> doesn't matter. Everybody gets a shot. Amen. God is no respecter of person. That's right. So you said, Pastor Quinn, why are you bringing it up like that? So don't consider your past to make you ineligible. Yes. The enemy will bring that up. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things are behind yes. and I'm reaching 
Uh, time is short. Uh, I'm trying to make it. Uh, yeah, I'm being about my father's business. Now, if you want to talk to me about what Christ did for you, I'm all, all right. in. Yeah. I'm all in. Somebody had their hand up. We about to close out. Go ahead. Yeah, I, have, I had a call like that Sunday morning. Uh -huh. and, and this person conf professed to be a Christian. Uh -huh. And uh, just was speaking about a conversation. Well, something this, this lady came to her and told her, I don't like it. Yeah. So now that's wow. just, and, and she wasn't even there. Lady that yeah. the lady told me, the one that called me wasn't there. So this lady was like, it was going off on me. Yeah. So I said, I, you know, I said, you need to be careful, you know, talking to me like that. Yeah. I said, I'm a child of God. That's right. So uh -huh. now she ended up telling the lady that called me that I don't like her. Uh, oh, so she my calls me God. Sunday morning. This lady's supposed to be a Christian. Oh my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, look, I don't deal with that. Story. Right. She that's said, what that's what's wrong with you, Christian. That's what you I said, I got to go. See you later. See you later. Bye. Well, <laughs> I ain't even let her finish. Right. <laughs> Nobody got time for that. Really? And that's how the enemy want to attack you on Sunday. Sunday morning. I call that a preemptive strike. Yeah. Uh, so it can mess you up. You thinking about that when you should be focused on Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, my brother. I work with trunks and drugs. Yeah. yeah. To help them get sober. That's, that's what I do. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's what God is up to point it yep. in. That's what I was trying to get, right? Yep. I had a gentleman last week that I was trying to help, and I said to him, look, I'm going to be here and it's in front of the mission at exactly 520 to come get you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I called up in front of the mission. They were working on the parking lot. He come out. I see him come out. I thought he was going to go around Side the door, right? And what he did, he put his hat and his sunglasses on. And where did he go? Uh, he picked, he picked up that. He street. ducked. He ducked. He dipped. And then he <laughs> turned around and told me, well, you fired as my sponsor. I don't want no part of you. I said, okay. But then he called me and started arguing again. Well, I guess you did that. And all I said to him, what I told him was, I'll see you Thursday. See you. That's it. The I devil know. rats on himself. <laughs> that demon that's in him rats on him. So I said, I didn't say nothing about you ducking me. Thank you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right, let's read, let's read uh, Abraham. We're going to close it up. 21. Amen. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? No. Now he's asking the question. Was Abraham justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, uh -huh. seest thou how faith wrought with his works, uh -huh. and by works was faith made perfect? Amen. Now, he's saying that uh, God, help me when we go. God knew what Abraham would do. Right? Right. But did that perfect his faith? No, it didn't perfect it. No, why not? Because he didn't do it. He didn't do it. <laughs> right? Therefore, his faith was not made what? Complete, perfect. God knows what you're going to do. Yes. Right? Yes. But what's going to perfect your faith? You do it. That's when you can stand before God and be perfected by you doing it. His knowing what you can do isn't what he's at. You're doing it, that seals the deal. I hope I'm saying that right so y'all can catch it. Show you the, the, the deeper importance of your faith. Huh? Not just him knowing what you're going to do, but you're actually, actually doing it. That's what perfects it. That's a whole nother level. Uh, Sister David. Your action is what gives God the testimony to say, now I know. Yeah. You believe me. Yeah. Yeah. 
the only way God can testify about our faith. About you. Have to be word. Wow. Just as he did Abraham. He testified, Abraham, I know you believe me yeah. now. Yeah. God has to testify about our faith. Wow. I know you believe me wow. when you do the work. That's exactly what I'm saying. Wow. Huh? God wants to testify about you. Right. And God, God, you know, he 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 can tell people what you what uh, uh, about you, but it's not the same as you doing it. Now the testimony has changed. It's true. Wow. Yep. Have you considered my servant Job? Uh, and Moses. God, did he say no God no God? Yeah. But he wants you to go through it. That's the trying of your faith yeah. being much more precious than gold that perish. Though it be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. At the end, God wants us to be, uh, uh, though it be tried by fire, to be found unto honor and praise at the appearing of Jesus Christ. He wants you to live this thing. Not just talk about it. Live it. Live it to the full. Kick the brakes off. Huh? Stop holding back. Lord. Let go and let God. Yeah. Huh? Wow. Huh? That's right. Ooh. Let go and let God. Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. We've done. Uh, we got three more minutes. Go ahead. Verse 23. Uh -huh. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said. Now, no, no, I like it. The scripture was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. When you do it, your life is fulfilled. The testimony is fulfilled. Read. Which said, Abraham believed God. That, that Ernie believed God. That, that Leona believed God. Huh? That Frank believed God. Don't we want that testimony? Huh? Huh? That Selena believed God. Hoping against hope. Huh? Against all odds. Frank believed me. Frank believed God. Huh? Because the book is going to be open. The book is going to be read. And she made a statement earlier about you're going to be rewarded according to your work shall be. Who's recording the work? What works are you are going to be rewarded for? Those that you believe God for. Uh, I don't want to get to heaven. Go by with, 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 with the angel Gabriel. He's showing me around. And he's saying, uh, we don't want to go in this room. Why not? Uh, you don't want to go in there, Frank. Uh, why not? Because uh, that's all the stuff you could have had if you believed God. Wow. 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 That's everything you could have had yes. if you just believed. Yeah. Wow. But now we got to give it to somebody else. Uh, we got to, we got to, we got to, because you took your talent and hid it. Oh. Uh, now, now we got to give it to the one that had five. <laughs> he said, I'll take it. Wow. <laughs> Believe your God. Uh, trust your God. You know what made Paul dangerous? Can I tell you what made Paul dangerous? He said, his testimony was, whether I live or I die, it's game. <laughs> you're a dangerous somebody when you're thinking like that. Uh, I got my hand behind my back. <laughs> you're dangerous. Huh? Whether I live or die, Christ is going to be glorified. Uh, I got nothing to lose. Uh, it's a win-win. Who I'm going to preach that one day? It's a win-win. Huh? Be Kabo Shanda. Hallelujah. I'm excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Hallelujah. Absolutely. All right, read. We got it. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Because he believed God, mm -hmm. God.
counted to him for righteousness. Read. And he was called the friend of God. Wow. 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 When you believe God, God calls you friend. Uh, no more servant, but what? Friend. friend. Huh? And the other beautiful thing about this is, the uh, reason why he uses Abraham, I thought I was done. The only the reason why he uses Abraham is because, and, uh, and that verse come out calling them friend, is because we're Abraham's seed. Yes. We have a connection. Yes. Uh, so when we walk by faith and not by sight, God calls us friend. <laughs> I am a friend of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. What makes you a friend? Your obedience. Huh? The scripture is dynamic. I love it. Uh, it feeds my soul. It feeds your soul. Huh? Thank you. Y'all should be ready to walk through the truth. Leap over the walls. Huh? Lay hands on everything. Huh? Hallelujah. Just believe your God. Hallelujah. Yeah, scripture just came to me um, when he came to Jesus and told him, uh, your mother and your brother is outside. So he said, who is my mother and brother? Yeah. He said, those that does the work. Yeah, the will of my father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Work. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Lonnie, can you turn off my camera? All right, give God a praise. Praise God for your faith.